In this problem, we have a roller coaster. The car starts up at the top at state one, goes down the hill to state two, over the next hill to state three, rounds the loop from four to five, and then it comes to a stop at six. There's no friction anywhere except between states five and six, so we know that from states one to five, energy is conserved. We're given H, L, R, M, and coefficient of friction. We know that the loop is a circle and the second hill is semicircular. And we need to find velocity at states two and three, normal force at state three, and stopping distance. So we will start out from one to two. We know that energy is conserved. So here we'll have energy at one equals energy at two. Potential energy at one equals kinetic energy at two. At state one, it's all potential. At two, it's all kinetic. So then we have mgh equals one half m v2 squared. Masses cancel. 2gh square rooted equals v2. So putting in the numbers, that is 2 is 9.81 times 50. V2 equals 31.3 meters per second. Now for B, we need to find velocity at three. So this one is a little bit more challenging because at state three, there is kinetic energy and potential energy, both. At state one, there's just potential. So from one to three, we know that mg is conserved. So mgh equals one half m v three squared plus m g l. So we have potential energy at one, kinetic energy at three, and potential energy at three. Now the nice thing here is that since energy is conserved from all the way from one through five, then we can skip step two and just go straight from one to three. So that way, if for some reason we had gotten velocity at state two wrong, then we can still get part B of this problem right because we know what mgh is. So again, we can cancel masses, rearrange. We have g times h minus l equals one half v three squared. So two g h minus l square rooted equals v three. So if we put numbers into there, 2 times 9.81 times 20 square rooted equals 19.8 meters per second. V3 equals 19.8 meters per second. And then velocity 3 here is less than velocity 2, which makes sense because it should be, if it's going zero at the top, it should be going fastest when it reaches the bottom, and then it should be going somewhere in between when it's at the height of the top of the next hill. So 19.8 is in between zero and 31.3, so that gives us confidence that this answer is correct. Now for normal force, we need to use force equations. So that will be Newton's laws. Well, if we draw out this free body diagram, So here is state three, we've got a car. So let's say we have the weight pulls down, mg. Uh, we have normal force, n, call it n3. And then we also have centripetal force because it's going over a rounded hill. 
Well, for a semicircular hill, the radius is the height of the hill. So then we'll have this, m v squared over l. Well, since the car is not moving off of the track, then we know some of the forces in the y equals zero, which is going to be m v squared over l plus m3 minus mg. So then we rearrange and solve for n3. n equals m times g minus v squared over l. We put numbers in here. That equals 1,000 times 9.81 minus 19.8 squared over 30. N equals negative 3270 newtons. So what does it mean for N to be negative? That means it points in the other direction. So instead of the track pushing upwards on the car, then it is pointing down. So what's really happening is it feels like you float. And so, and you can tell that when you go over the hill on the roller coaster, right? You kind of feel like you're floating up at the top. Um, whereas at the bottom of the hill, you feel like you're getting really, really smushed into the ground. So that shows direction of the normal force is changing. your seat belt is holding you down instead of pushing you, the, instead of your seat pushing you up. So normal force is pointing downwards. Finally, we need to find the stopping distance. We know that from one to six, work and energy. Energy is not conserved. Well, from a free body diagram, we can see here between five and six, we've got weight pushing down, normal force pushing up, friction from the track. So some of the forces in the Y equals zero, N equals mg, F mu equals mu mg. And then we know energy at one, which is the same as energy at two, three, four, and five. So that's why we can go from one to six. Um, alternatively, we could just go five to six and we need to know velocity at five, which is the same as velocity at two that we figured out earlier. But since energy at five is the same as energy at one, then we can still use one. So E1 plus W one to six equals E6. So this is going to be, let's see. So at one, we have potential energy, potential energy at one, and then we have minus this work by friction And then what is the energy at state six? Well, does it have potential? It's on the ground, so potential energy is zero. Does it have kinetic? Well, it's stopped, so kinetic energy is also zero. So this here means we just put zero. So then we have M, G, H minus the work by friction, which is mu mg times that distance. We can cancel the mgs. D equals h over mu. 
So this equals 50 divided by 1 equals 50. So to recap this problem, we want to find speed at 2, speed at 3, normal force at 3, and stopping distance. What we need to do is draw a free body diagram, assign coordinate frame, then for each state we identify if energy is conserved or if work is present, write the equations, solve for the unknown. Sometimes we need to solve from the free body diagram to get certain forces to put into the energy equation, or sometimes we just need to know the force, we just solve the force equation. 